Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to WGL in Shanghai. $60,000 on the line. Seven out of eight matches of the winner bracket semifinals are over. We have one more for you in store. And the youngest player is stepping in the ring, representing the Rogue Warriors from China, the returning life. Our last match of these first round games. Life versus Sock. This is going to be... A lot of question marks getting answered. A lot of these matches we knew kind of going in what shape are these players and who is going to be considered the favorite here. I would have a very tough time calling it. Life, a very talented player. If he is showing up in shape, he is looking extremely strong. Sock, oh, what does he have prepared this time? The B-Boy is back in Shanghai. Whoa, he improved. One arm handstand into foot clap. Well he done. stepped up his game compared to last one. He is just such a likable guy, the Korean here, being picked up by winners as well. Same as Tomiko, they have a pretty strong uh, human lineup indeed. And now, can Korea go to yet another winner bracket final as Lin was just defeated? Or will it be life representing China there? Oh boy, this is a match that doesn't have the biggest names. There's no Lin, TH, Moon, Happy. But on paper, this should be a crazy battle. Mm -hmm. And just to enjoy the craft of the war. We have seen Sok defeating Moon yep. in a, uh, recent history a couple of times. And in these games, this would, it was just a spectacle. We've seen Blood Mages first play. We have seen insane games that were like almost over after like 30, 35 minutes, and then there was a disconnect and we had to play it again, which was pretty awesome actually because we just got more of the action. And this is what I expect here. Just gloves off, mm -hmm. action-packed games. Life seems to still be reeling from his break from Warcraft. Before Reforged was announced, Life seemed to have retired from the scene despite his young age. But it's seemingly with Reforged he was back perhaps a little bit earlier and he's putting his time back into Warcraft once again. Life was, after 1-2-0 for a long time, by far the most talented player in the scene. It looked like before Moon's Rise again that he would be possibly the strongest Knight of in the world. But it seems like he still hasn't recovered from this. Yeah. He is still still kind of far away from his best shape that we have seen him in previously, whereas Sock, for him it's been a continuous grind, little by little. He's been in the scene now quite a while himself, and he's been improving more and more. In 2019, Sock is one of the standout players, young up-and-coming players of this year. Yeah, absolutely a contender for most improved player so mm -hmm. far, I think. Um, I'm not too sure. Was it the Yule Cup where yes. he had? Yeah, it was the Yule Cup where he eliminated Moon from the playoffs. Nobody thought he would be able to do that. Was then defeated twice in a row by 1 2 0, which is no shame as 1 2 0 is crazy good against human and it might not be Sock's best thing. But we knew him for his personality and for his play style for a long time. The results oftentimes weren't the greatest, but he's getting there. He's getting closer to the 6S players uh, or 7 if you I include Lolliot now. And he could actually make it out of this group, if you ask me, as a very, very mm -hmm. strong matchup against Orc, uh, which I think goes back to human being very, very strong in that matchup. Lin says of himself he's very strong against human as well, so we will see about that if it comes to that. But let's not underestimate Sock. And for life, that's, it's so hard to predict um, because on paper... He has all the mechanics, he has a great aggressive playstyle that is different from basically every other Night Elf, so it's really hard to prepare for him. But sometimes, you know, thinking back of his last Gold League appearance, he was almost out of the scene there as well and just came because he qualified and, you know, whatever. His games were over in like five minutes with massive mistakes, with very sloppy play, and that happens from time to time in online games tournaments as well or he just gives the death win right away because yep. he doesn't feel like playing or whatever it's really hard to read his mind but if he's in the right mindset and maybe there's some pressure from the rogue warriors as well to represent the well here at the world uh, championships then he can certainly tear up this bracket mindset 
emotions don't seem to be his strong suit. If he doesn't feel like it, if he's having a bad day, is that what it is? I'm not sure. He seems to collapse. We oftentimes see him playing really well in the first game, but then still losing that first game in a hard-fought battle, and then he just completely falls apart, seemingly com capitulating for the, last, for the rest of the series, looking like a different player oftentimes. He's, of course, still young. But we can't really call him inexperienced. He's been around for so long. He's been playing so many tournaments already. Perhaps he needs a bit of mentoring. Speaking of Rogue Warriors and the motivation slash pressure they're putting on him, there was a bit of uh, a scandal with him recently after having uh, given those death losses. He was actually fined by the organization, which is something we don't have much at all in the Warcraft community. So life, they're trying to discipline him a little bit. And hopefully, for the first time now, he's going to have that big performance at WG. Yeah, actually, he wanted to leave the clan afterwards. Uh, Infi's wife talked him back into it. Sock is pretty happy at winners. They just picked him up, the Korean team. I think he's pretty happy in every single <laughs> regard. Uh, always a smile on his face. Was a little struggling qualifying for this. It was a battle between him and Foggy for the last place uh, for the Korean slash European uh, slots there. But there was a lot of pressure on him in the last qualifier. He did not break a sweat, played his best, got far in that May tournament. And yeah, that's why he's here, deservedly so. Sock, Bands, Concealed Hill and Twisted, so the bigger maps, Life getting rid of Northern Isles and Terranas, interestingly, leaving us with Amazonia, Echo Isles and Last Refuge, a pretty standard Night Elf versus Human map pool, I would say. Yeah, the question is pretty much always between Concealed and AZ. What does the human... Uh like less between those two. We saw actually that one super epic game between Sock and Moon where he was the in the limelight of the entire scene. That was on Concealed Hill, but no, says Sock. He's going to AZ, which used to be a super, super scary keeper map, but this is 1.31. Yeah. Is it still dominated by the keeper of the Grove, or are we going to see the return of the Demon Hunter here as well? Alrighty, we go into the last game of the day to determine Happy's opponent in the winner bracket final. This is the last game of Group D. Echo Isles is number one. Rogue Warrior Life versus Winner's Sock. Echo Isles to start with, and as you were pointing towards earlier, Sock isn't so predictable. This doesn't have to be AM first every single time. We saw from him as well previously the Blood Mage. The uh, MK could be a possibility as well. This is a map where those unusual hero choices are viable, thanks to the Murkamp, thanks to mercenary support, and the fast expansion, which is easy to pull off here. Life. What is he doing? Aggressive play? Passive play? He's starting off with a safe creep towards the green camp, which usually should mean keeper a keeper. The grove, indeed. Archmage or the altar also pointing towards uh, the upper green spot, not towards the expansion. So maybe we stay on one base with rifles like that. Life! Man, 22 years old, making his debut in 2015, so he started professional Warcraft when he was like 17 or so. That's absolutely crazy. In a day where there was basically no fresh new blood. And Whoa. that's something I've rarely seen from Yan Hao. I've, like, Warden from him. Yeah. When you think of the Warden players, the big ones are Lord Lyot and Foggy. And those are the two masters of it, really. Life... I totally agree with you, not known for that hero choice at all. With the Demon Hunter especially, he is so strong usually. And this is a great Demon Hunter map, by the way. Echo Isles for quick also, level 3. like what is this? Warden is always, in 99.9% oh, of the cases, Warden's starting right. to creep at the Merc yeah. camp. She needs levels. She needs... Level 2 isn't really enough, actually. She needs level 3. How is he going to get level 3 with an Ancient of War so far away from any second camp? Does this mean second Ancient of War creeping? Double Ancient of War? We yeah. did used to see that sometimes. This is already looking strange. I agree, but we'll see. Maybe there's a deeper game plan behind this. Sock's year, as we've pointed out, was pretty damn great. So far, way better than his previous years. Third place in Yule Cup after the 3-2 over focus in the game for third. Uh, third to fourth in some open qualifiers as well. 
and just in general doing a lot better than usual, reaching the playoffs in the H&W Masters as well. This is only his third Gold League participation, playing the very, very first one in 2015, where he was eliminated in the group stage very early, and last time where he brought Fly to the verge of being eliminated in the round robin group stage, one of the craziest uh, decision games we have seen there in Group B. And it is a Huntress backup. And a second Ancient of War in the middle. Yeah, at the marketplace. I have never seen this before. Mass Hunt, level one Warden play. This is an important last hit. Can the Warden steal it? No! No! Oh boy. Level two for Sock now. This is a great early game for the human. Having the Brilliance Aura already, keeping the Warden away. Is, he, is his game plan really to just rely on his strong right clicks or last hits? That is so risky. I guess he wants to harass as much as possible. Distract the human as much as he can and then hit an expansion, an early expansion, hard with mass hunts. But it is no early expansion. We do have the tech coming up. We saw this between uh, OC and Infi, how important level 3 AM is. And this is why the Warden is so aggressively playing. Not creeping herself. If she, if she creeps herself, AM creeps as well. And then we're going to have level 3 in no time with that level 2 water elementals. And then hunts are super hard to make work. But Sok is getting off a good scout. He sees the tier 1 only, so now he must know. Okay, either there's an expansion somewhere or there's a second Ancient of War. He almost saw it, but I don't believe he did because it's night time. Indeed. But um, there's no Demon Hunter, so the Archmage will have a lot of mana to work with for the Water Elementals. That's a good thing. There's also no pressure into his expansion yet. We have seen uh, no fan of knives. That is a Shadow Strike first. So he can just go through his tech tree as he wants to. I would still give this uh, to, to Sock, uh, but yeah, he sees it now. Oh, can he interfere? Oh, he finds the Creep Jack. Hell yeah, the footy's coming in. Four of them. It's not that much, honestly. Water Elemental is going to get spawned here. He did bring a Dust. Can try to take out these archers. The first one is going to fall. And the creep still laying into the Ancient of War. It's usually pretty important to get rid of these uh, footmen, but with Huns, it's like you kill them automatically. But losing oh this Ancient of yeah. War is not a good thing at all. Sock wants to continue this fight, bringing in Militia. And Sock is getting more and more kills. These archers are almost all dead. Good micro. Uh, Getting some attraction from this Huntress that is out of the fight for now as well. And now, if Life wants to be aggressive, moving towards 40 supply, how is he going to get there? He doesn't have the production anymore. He doesn't have Murkamp access to get units there as well, so he's teching instead. And that tech is so far behind. Yeah. I think Sock's tech is almost yeah. finished already. And even if he gets done with that tech, there's going to be rifles fast. Yeah, he has the blacksmith already. A paladin Pally second. Seconds. Okay. Well, there's a lot of shadow strikes, yeah, so having sense. holy light makes a lot of sense. And also, we have seen the impact of the buff divine shield in this matchup quite a bit, and it's pretty damn good. Because what can life go for? Early tier two is only dryads. That doesn't yep. win anything against rifles. And then bears take a lot of time. And until then, Sock should be... Oh, nice micro by life here. Sock should be in a position to break the bears as well. Nice but block. that, indeed, is, is gonna a pop the nice greater mana. Mm -hmm. If he does, he can blink and shadow strike and force the TP, perhaps. Sock is staying in here rather long. He's going to get the Huntress as well. Oh, but he knows the Paladin is coming in. He pops the oh. mana potion going for the Shadow Strike. But the Holy Light comes in. And this was so much mana wasted now. Split second save by the Pally. But of course, you can spam Holy Light until your mana is empty. And the Warden can't she continue the pressure on only level 2. If she only had level 3 by now with the Mercenary Creep Camp or something. Nope. That is not enough damage for sure. Oh, life is in a tough spot. Yeah, this is already looking super rough. But Sock has no control. Um, there might be slow later, but he's not going to get rid of these Huntress with Clap, and he cannot control the Warden with Stormbolt. So she is basically free to do whatever she wants. That's true, but she's always going to be reliant on mana and levels. She's not even level 3 just yet. She might get the level up here, but it's hard to find those kills against the Paladin. Fan of Knives, Shadow Strike coming in again, but guess what? Now she's out of mana, and now what does she do? Actually finds a kill there just with right clicks, but still the mana is low, still has to be careful. But yeah, you're right, with the MK not being here, actually, life can play this pretty aggressively, not having to fear losing these units too easily. But as far as pure army goes, 
Tier 2 Human is way superior to Tier 1 Night Elf, of course, and also superior to Tier 2 Night Elf. You actually need Tier 3 unless your hero is completely out of control. Is the Warden so out of control? Not really. She needs level 4. She probably needs level 5. Wow, Ancient Protector even. This will delay Tier 3 even longer. And Sock is just pushing with Militia. He wants to punish this late tech and greediness with the creep camp in the middle. Getting distracted by these units for oh, now. Does he get the AP? If he cancels this, this is going to be so tough for life to hold. A tower rush against Night Elf. Oh, how long has it been? A little shout out to Sky maybe, and the AP is down. Warden already low HP. The Moon Juice is still looking good. Makes it to the Moon Welsh. I think a shop is coming up as well. She's going to need that. But the Moon Juice is mostly gone already, and this lore seems to be getting cancelled as well. Only a single tower up here, but not even really piercing damage against it. Finding the kill, finding the cancel is going to be tough. And what are these hunters is doing now? Going for a second hero, that is the panda, which is all right. But on level one, that hero isn't that good either. To that. There's a, wow, a workshop aggressively to get mortar teams or something. Fan of knives again, but that doesn't do too much. He has three priests to heal this up. We have seen double area of effect here, but only level one. So the priest can do a good job against that. AP is almost up though, but so is the Tower of Sock. And if this workshop comes through, then he can go for a gyrocopter first to have reveal. Um, and then to smaller teams for damage to just wreck this base. It's a workshop rush. Yeah, and how are you supposed to break this now? You have dryads only. Dryads against rifles and mortars. This is like... It's looking hopeless. This is unbelievable. How he punished this. Detonates are coming in. This is good experience. The fan was great, but... Right. Needs a follow-up as well, but it's GG! And Sock takes map number one. Life's game plan didn't work out at all. It was unconventional, it was creative. There was a chance for it to work, but only if you play perfectly. And that was not a ga perfect game by life. So, I, I'm not sure I understand <laughs> what happened in that game. Obviously, it's a very rare strategy. We don't really see that much. But what was the idea by life? Did he have the hard read that he thought that Sock was definitely, definitely gonna fast expand against that Warden with mass hunts? Sounds good on paper, but what if he doesn't do it? What if he just texts? I think it's also the reason why he did that, because this could and should have been a proxy engine of war at the marketplace. So if Sock expands, he has a lot of aggressive potential. And usually, life knows Sock. The stats between them, Life is 6 and 0. Oh. That is pretty damn impressive. Sock has never won a series against him. Well, it's 12 and 2 in maps. It's crazy. Everything comes to an end, Neo, sooner or later. You want to start the Jinx game again? <laughs> it worked out well for Hunter, didn't it? I didn't tell him yet. Just be careful. Speaking of Hunter, we have seen him there with uh, Lawlight and Chimiko holding a Sock Go sign. Uh, as always, the connection between Korea and the Western Sea is pretty damn good. Sock looking good in that first game, but must realize that that was easier than it should have been done. Uh, should have been, honestly. The Warden, level 1 Warden aggressive play, I don't know about that, man. Life, go back to your standard. Go back to your, in quotes, cookie cutter builds. He is really strong with Demon Hunter. Get yourself level 3, get yourself the boots, tech up behind. Naga on level 2, look for some kills, perhaps. This is how he first got so good. He got good with solid play, with yep. standard play, not with this weird, cheesy curveball play. What, is it, what does that tell us about him? Does that tell us that he isn't too well practiced in the standard games and he's trying to cheese out some wins here? I think he just wanted to impress with something new because what an exclamation mark would it have been if this tactic actually works? Then you get maybe a little aura of, oh boy, this young kid is unpredictable. Because, as I said in the very early discussions of this, he is playing so different from everyone. He's not playing the standard anymore at all. It would kind of be surprising if he goes standard by now. In the Keeper dominated days though, he was actually the one guy who was playing more Demon than many other Night Elves. Admittedly, mostly in the Night Elf Mirror, but still there it was almost always Keeper amongst the other players. We haven't seen a Keeper yet, we haven't seen a Demon Hunter yet. It was the Warden attempted and the Warden failed. Next map is going to be a big tell for which hero we see. Warden is usually very map dependent. Demon Hunter, you can play kind of anywhere and the Keeper you can certainly play anywhere. 
Neutral hero is also a possibility, but perhaps not really lifestyle. Okay, he has to strike back to stay in the winner bracket. This is Amazonia, a map where it's very hard to expand on and very good to rush on. Will we see the aggressive life or will Sock put once again pull a rush out of his head? Match two, match points for this little man. Winners, Sock in the upper right, Broke Warrior Life in the bottom left. This is a map where we will most certainly not be seeing a warden. Well, that being said, we did see her in the past, yep. but it's so good for the it's ri it's actually ridiculously good for the keeper of the grove. You get level three super quickly, very reliably, and then you can go on the hunt, finding kill after kill. You can scout easily for the opponent expansion if that is the case. You can harass it pretty well, and if it's not, you can just keep on the creeping. That being said, it's also pretty good for a Demon Hunter. Getting the level 2 jump start right away, getting 2 items right away, and if you'd creep in the middle towards the Berserkers, level 3 isn't too hard either, so I think this will be a return to more of the standard here. Question is, what's Sock gonna do? He's gonna decide what's happening here in the early game, he's gonna dictate the pace. Is it gonna be a one base tech play, or will it be the early expansion? We do see the Keeper of the Grove against the AM. Okay. Yeah, uh, we said this many, many times. The best keeper map, as it's so easy to get level two and then get the tree and entangle combo. He, yeah, needs to pressure sock a little more. I feel like there was no echo damage done. Just a quick tag, just a quick rush execution, and boom, there was the win. That you, you can you cannot allow that to sock. If he can play a standard game, he's really, really strong. Has a very defined game plan. I feel. Yeah, he's been uh, impressing me as well as many others over the last couple of months. Judging from the first game, life perhaps not yet in the best shape here. Needs to step it up a little. Ancient of War creep right away for the quick lightning shield trick and the quick level two. Keeper coming out. I don't think Sock's going to play an expansion, is he? I don't think so either. Uh, this rifle play worked out so well. He is a player that loves to expand. We've seen this when he was breaking into the pro scene. How many like tank games he played. Uh, so that needed an expansion, of course. But nowadays, he has a lot of variety of strategies. And on this small map, maybe he is even expecting a very aggressive play by life. And so he plays a little more carefully. It would surprise me to see an expansion. Life starting off with some very unfortunate items. The ring and the slippers, not what he wanted. AM on the other side, circlet, and Ooh. the mantle. Hell yeah, the baby. Nuts. The nuts. That's precisely what he was hoping for. And life moving towards the middle with level 2, not continuing to creep towards level 3, despite how easy it actually is. With his positioning here, of course, threatening an attack should an expansion be the idea, but I don't believe that's the case at all. So far we have one archer only, so the footman snipe potential isn't that great. Once we have three archers, then footies lead a different life, a dangerous life, where they can start falling like flies. Okay, confirmed no expansion and confirmed no Huntress AP rush. A standard tier 2 play, Player and especially on attack. Amazonia, we have seen a lot of Dryad only play. Do you think life is a player to do that and to execute it well enough? I would expect him to go tier 3 here. I would expect him to take this later with the Alchemist coming in on tier 2. He's getting quite a few kills now. One footy already dead. Second one to fall. Keeper doesn't quite have the mana for the next entangle. But that's a bit more experience going his way. Getting closer to level 3. Now if he goes back to the main, sip up from the Moonwells, go to the Kobold Tunneler camp. There he will be getting level 3 and then this game can become a little scary for the human. Where do you go next? How do you not lose everything? This Archmage right clicks, by the way, plus eight, hell yeah. Also, the mana pool super sick. Keeper is under a little bit of pressure. Nice deny by Sock. And a kill from the Water Elemental as well. It's a good exchange so far. Oh, reveal. One of the few pro players who actually brings a reveal right on time and being rewarded for it. And I have to question Live's movement. Like, why is he playing so aggressively on level two? Just after level two, keep on creeping to level three, and then if Please you go for the first big engagement with level three, you will own these footies. So easy. But what is that? Impatience? I don't know. It's just This is not the way this is supposed to look early on for Nylof on AZ. Well, 
life escapes. Oh, another block to prevent him from the oh, move. Wow, can he force the TP? Oh. <laughs> that was extremely close. Uh, but yeah, life, like, as an example, he plays tier one tower rushes against orc. Like, that's how life is. It's just aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. And sometimes it must not make sense. He just does it because he likes it. To be fair, though, actually a lot of footmen died. I think possibly every single footman may have fallen. The archer very late with the pull back there. I guess the knight at least, but the archer is still dead, and that could have been saved. The camera was somewhere else. A little bit too slow despite his young age is the Chinese here, seemingly. AM gets out of the first entangle, acid bomb combo. Only level one entangle. Not too scary. The first poison ivy of this tournament in game eight. How many of those have we seen in the first eight games in the last World Championship? 200? The forces are under attack. Oh, things have changed indeed. Mountain King second. Staying on one base so far. Uh, the humans have developed the way to expand on tier two. Uh, Thorzane comes to mind. Also TH in P, of course. But doesn't seem to be Sock style here. It's a little scary right now. AM is very low. If the Knight of Heroes get in range, there should be an easy TP forced and tangle. Acid Bomb, and there we go, that's the TP, and that one is going to be not replaced for a long time. Actually, he doesn't have a shop, and he doesn't have the yep. priest yet. Who is he trapped in his base? He's going to have a priest in a moment, though. And once he's back to 450 HP, he should be able to confidently move out again, as the Knight of Heroes are low mana. But the ruthless aggression for life for the first time in this game has paid off. This is the strength of the Keeper Alchemist combo, the Poison Ivy, and yeah, playing it to the fullest here. Double lores coming up. Stays on tier 2 for now. Does not lack the resources for tier 3, so he's just waiting for the Dryads and upgrades, and then will most likely stay that way. And again, Entangle, Acid Bomb, right clicks, kill. Doesn't have enough mana for the next one. The Alchemist actually has to be careful running back into the waiting arms of the Mountain King. This Alchemist is dead. That's level three for the Archmage becoming much stronger. Militia come out perhaps a little bit late, but still seem to be in time. Yeah, nice realization by Sock that there's no staff, there's no potion. There's nothing to save him and life again, staying in a little too long. Huh? Ancient of War walking into the creeps. He's just preparing this creep spot, you know. Just, uh, I mean, I mean, now he has to go for it, of course, as the Ancient of War walks in. Don't know that was exactly intentional, but all right, we're gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. It, it looked a little weird for Sock as he was uh, solo with his Archmage, but he's back to full map control. I feel. Even if there's three Dryads, he has to wait for the Alchemist now. Uh, levels aren't crazy, Players it's not like he can push it all the time with Treant. So it's time to level up the Mountain King. And he got level 2 already. He has a second claw for this Archmage. Dude. These Dryads will not have an easy life. Straight up not having a good time. Going for the Keeper now. He has the heal pot, doesn't want to have to use it already. Good entangle to keep the MK back. And with that, we'll be able to heal up at the Moonwells. Sock, no involves, no TP, no problem. He is feeling confident in this game. Yeah, against Entangle, like against Acid Bomb and Entangle, no items to use at all. Um, showing that he seems to be in full control or feels himself in full control. And this Dryad only play, which Life is playing, right? He's not going to tier 3. I haven't seen the main in a while. But it's a lot of dryads. Yeah, it so. Seems like it's too many dryads to go into MGs now. I you agree. need the craziest micro to pull that off. Because on paper, the human army owns you in a straight up A-click fight. And we see it right here. Okay. Getting the first rifle at least. But two dryads have already died. This seems to be too much damage. Now the alchemist in trouble again. Doesn't have anything to save the second hero. He was still stunned. Couldn't pop. That heal potion, and now even with Militia coming in, Sock is storming through this laughable Night Elf force. Life in full retreat now. Calls for the GG, and that's a quick 2-0 for the Korean. Sock takes the last victory of today. And again, Life disappointing offline on the biggest stage. Uh, this was a little reminiscent of his last appearance here, where also he was kicked out of the tournament on Amazonia in like three minutes. For Sock, walk in the park. He had to wait a long time for his game, but 
Yeah, I expected this to be a lot closer and a lot more exciting. Um, life, unfortunately, letting us down a bit. He's just maybe not made for the big stage. He's very good in these uh, minor offline tournaments, but the next step, still not there. Yeah, it just felt off. Like he wasn't aware of his power spikes. He's fighting too early or too late. He doesn't make use of his level threes. Both heroes in both games rely on them. The Warden in the first one, the Keeper in the second was hit way too late into the game. Didn't get off to a good start and didn't come back either. Life, I was expecting honestly a lot more from him, mm -hmm. but I feel like we keep on saying this. Yeah, for it years. Just, it just keeps on happening. I think his last impressive offline tournament was like Robam or something. <laughs> That's oh. I don't even know oh. what year it was, 2016 or 17. I, uh, I'm not too sure. Since then, he didn't improve too much, actually. He's always trying to yeah. find the flash he plays. Um, he with like rabies, but no. He's starting to look like that player that is going to be branded as so talented, but never performs when it matters. Yeah. Sock, though, not getting stressed out by the stage at all. Uh, showing off in style once again with his uh, breakdance move there from the handstand into the winner bracket final. This is not going to be an easy one as it is against Happy. And mm -hmm. Happy usually destroys humans left, right and center. But uh, Sock, as I said, seemed like he had two clear game plans, worked out flawlessly. And if he develops a game plan for Happy, I could see that to become a very, very close series as he was facing 1-0 to zero a lot recently in playoff matches in his biggest tournament so far, so I can only imagine him practicing his ass off uh, for those matches. And he's, so that means he's not coming in uh, unprepared for Happy. Group D, uh, as we're heading into it today, was looking uh, the most promising pretty much out of all the groups, and we were definitely expecting to this for this to be a close uh, contention between these players. And of course, it's only the first two games played. Players can improve, can also uh, decrease in shape, but if it stays like this, what the players have shown, it's going to be life definitely with the worst chance in this group. All right. We uh, see the stage. We see Sock hopefully with a big smile on the stage here real quick. This was a bad day for China, man. Not a single uh, not a single player into the winner bracket, right? It's mm -hmm. Moon versus Chimiko. It's Happy versus Sock. We find a lot of Chinese players here in the lower bracket, thanks uh, to Sock and Moon and Happy. Uh, not happy, actually, but yeah. So, again, the Chinese rely on 1-2-0 Infi TH. Infi still has a chance, of course, as well. But here we have Sock on stage. <laughs> His fan club of Chimiko, Lolliot, and Hunter there. Gonna be very interesting to see him now going up against Happy next. Um, happy... I can't even remember the last time he lost to a human Me neither. player. I will look it up for tomorrow, but uh, this seems it's to be like ages ago. It's been a while. And the last time we saw it at the Legendary Cup, Hawk was sounding almost defeated moving into the final already, <laughs> where he continued to lose as well. But a lot of things have changed in that matchup. We have the Orb of Fire nowadays, which does uh, a debuff for healing decrease. And we also have the night buff with the Sundering Blades. How much does that affect the matchup? Interestingly enough, when we had a chance to quick, uh, sh quickly talk to 1-0, to he actually says that this matchup nowadays is in the human's favor. But normally, you know, uh, pro players are kind of uh, biased, obviously, for their race. We haven't seen too many of that matchup just yet, especially in 1.30. We saw this matchup very little. Most top humans were switching to Night Elf. Sock, of course, won't be doing that. Yeah. And we have to speak a little about Night Elves as well. They were coming in as the strongest race uh, with six players. And now only, well, where is there? Moon is there in the winner bracket final. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else from yesterday? Not in the winner bracket, no. Not in the winner bracket, man. Hunter down, OC down, Colorful down, Life down, Law Lion down. This uh, times have changed. Mm -hmm. It's not 1.30 anymore, and uh, it's, it's clearly visible now. It's a different era, absolutely. Law Light still has chances. Um, Everyone still has chances, man. Everyone still has chances. Law Light, though. Other than Moon has the best chances, I would say. Yeah. 
colorful, honestly, really disappointing. Life, really disappointing. The Chinese uh, Night Elf Guard, not with a strong showing here at all. Things can change, they can improve, but they will have to improve drastically to have a chance to get into the round of eight. And Hunter, well, I, uh, I would love to see him, but he's going to have uh, a tough task as well ahead of himself. These lower bracket matches are for the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow we have the day of winners. In Group A, this is going to be 1-2-0 versus Infi Hype. In Group B, we have uh, TH versus... Who was it again? Uh, focus. Ver versus Focus. Oh, that's also a good game. Super Hype. In Group B, we have M Moon... <laughs> <laughs> of course, a little celebration by a guy that we will see tomorrow as well from Group D. It's this young man versus Happy. Like, per from personality, is there a bigger difference than Sock versus Happy? <laughs> it's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> that is uh, fire and ice colliding tomorrow. And, of course, we forgot about Moon versus Tomiko. That will be played as well. Four amazing matches I can't wait for tomorrow, man. I just want to sleep, wake up, and cast again. It's also cool how this uh, new schedule format is working out. Like It seems like we're ramping up. You know, the first two days, nobody's eliminating yet, eliminated yet. We're just setting up the big deciding games. Tomorrow we're going to have the first four in the playoffs, but nobody's out of this tournament just yet. So, here we have... Group D, how it transpired, and seeing Sock here, just like one year ago, this would have been pretty unbelievable. Sock making it instead of Lin, instead of Life, Happy versus Sock here now. We're going to have Russia or Korea moving through in first place, and these are the matches for tomorrow that we just were talking about. Starting off with Infi versus 1-0, Focus TH, Moon Chimiko, and Happy versus Sock. Yeah, three Chinese, four Koreans, one Russian. This is a fairly normal distribution, I would say, uh, between the countries. Like, basically 50-50 between mm -hmm. Korea and China. It's always a little up and down. And one of the Western guys uh, always having a good shot in these races. And we haven't seen too much of the players yet, but we have seen everyone for one match. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit early to call, but let's speculate uh, a little bit. Who is impressing us the most so far? TH was absolutely god tier. Uh, that's the easy answer. Mm -hmm. One to zero was for me better than expected. I he was very strong on game two and three against Lolai. Like Twisted was an absolute annihilation. Mm -hmm. uh, everything went wrong for Lolai there. Game three was more 50-50, and then in the end, these fights, this micro, this decision-making, this was top tier 1-0 to zero again. The question is, will he be able to bring that to the table tomorrow? That is always, he's always a little shaky when it comes to that, especially against uh, opponents that are mentally more stable than him, speaking of TH and Infi uh, as a prime example. Okay, and apart from that, Moon was okay. Uh, Happy was as strong as we expect him. So, yeah, this is going to be, like... TH happy, 1-2-0, uh, mm -hmm. I think, are the big ones. So we will see you tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in. It was awesome. Back to Warcraft. <laughs>